It's the big game. It's the big game. Hey, 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 guys. Old Man G, RDS here, back again for a match preview of the United versus City do or die FA Cup final game. This is pre recorded just so that people know. This is not live. This is pre recorded so, so people know because I'm on vacation. But I was contemplating why I should do this or just do a live reaction, but I had to do it because I've got to get my pre game thoughts out for this game because. As far as I'm concerned, this is a must-win game. Um, United are probably the only team that can stop City from winning a treble because Inter aren't doing anything in that final. I don't care what anyone says. Inter are not doing anything in that final. If United lose this game, City basically have got the treble in my book because Inter ain't doing anything. They're, they're just not. They're not, not. And when you look at the path to the final, as I've said so many times in the Champions League, the team that has the hardest path to the final always wins, generally speaking, always wins the Champions League. Inter's path to the final was ba- was it was a joke essentially. You know, AC Milan in the semis, and I think was it was it Benfica? I think in the quarters. Um, I can't remember who they played in the round of sixteen, but it wasn't it wasn't that difficult compared to City, obviously going through the likes of Bayern Munich and Real Madrid, for example. You know, so so for me, this is a must win game, a must 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 win game for Manchester United. Um, I don't know how we're going to do it, um, especially, and I will talk about it in a bit with the injuries. Um, at the same time, I also think the players need to focus on just winning the game as opposed to stopping City winning a treble. You know, they have to believe in themselves to be able to actually win the game of football. Ultimately, that's what they have to do. That is what they have to do. They have to believe that they can beat Manchester And we have beaten Manchester City already this season. However, this Manchester City side have evolved uh, since we last played them. You know, where, you know, Fred just marked PDB and they'll just sort of one di- somewhat one-dimensional just crossing the board to Haaland. Now... They, they, they've evolved a lot more. They're a lot better, a lot more efficient, and they're just seeing off teams. So really, the only way I see City losing is if they basically become complacent um, and if they underestimate us, you know, to be honest. Um, but I'm not going to lie, guys. I, I generally don't know how we win this game. Um, if Ten Hag does somehow win it, masterclass, genius. You know, but what I do know is that we need to maintain our cool. We need to... Um, we Every player on the field, who should know what this means to Manchester United fans. So, at the very least, if we lose and they're just better and it is what it is, then that's fine. But if we just make stupid mistakes, if we're not tracking back, we're not playing hard, any of those things, I want maximum effort from every player. That means our wingers, whoever they're going to be tomorrow, because I've got no idea who they're going to be, track back. If Sancho's playing, you got to track back. Okay? Four backs, track back. Defenders defend, etc. Everyone has to play 100% and maximum capacity because there's so much at stake. So I don't want to see this being like, oh, this person had a bad game, this didn't try, etc., etc. Everybody has to play incredibly well. That's what has to happen. That's what has to happen. But before we get into it, let me just quickly go into a starting 11, actually. Um, so I think this is, this is where I think things are going to be interesting because um, Ten Hag in his press conference confirmed that um, Martial and Anthony is unlikely to start or be involved tomorrow. So, you know, these those were the fears, I thought. Um, you know, <sighs> these are the things, you know, with Martial, what, was, what, was there really much point in him playing against Fulham? I wouldn't have done it personally. I would have kept on the course and it didn't really matter, but he played and somehow he got injured against Fulham. There the were pictures showing that he was holding his hamstring um, when Ten Hag made the speech. So did he get injured whilst standing? I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, um, it's unfortunately, I think with Marshall, I don't know what it is, but at the end of the day, um, it's shown us a scene that we can't rely on him. Um, whatever you say about Lukaku, Ronaldo, all those other players, at the end of the day, they were able to be stay fit and be number nines. You know, everyone could talk about Marshall's technique and other players' techniques, but at the end of the day, availability is the most available, is the best asset as far as I'm concerned. Martial, Pogba, Sancho, like we have a lot of good, talented players, but they're not available. So as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter. You know, um, it is what it is. Um, and Anthony is I'm getting a little bit worried about Anthony because obviously we did pay quite a bit for him, but at the end of the day, like how many injuries has he had this season? You know, he's had you know, he's had tons of injuries. Sancho, we're still waiting to see what he what he does. So it is what it is. But anyway, what do I think the starting eleven is going to be? Um, obviously, De Gea is going to be in goal. I think that's just enough said. Um, 
Let's have a quick look. De Gea, come on. There we go. So, yeah, De Gea will be in goal. He has to have a good game today uh, against City. Like, we can't afford any De Gea. Like, I mean, he had a good game against Fulham. Great saves, but he has to. We can't have mistakes by De Gea, man. De Gea has to be, com be, be clutch today. If we're going to get anything from this game, De Gea must save, basically. We can't have De Gea mistake. We've got to have De Gea saves. It, it, it is what it is. Um, now, the back four is going to be interesting. And I don't know whether Ten Hag plays Luke like he did against City or Trafford, whether he plays Luke short left-sided centre-back. Lindelof has been doing very, very well, so I don't know. Um, it's a difficult one because Luke Shaw was good up against Erling Haaland. And it would be good to mobilise him, but he's still got likes of Bernardo Silva and other players as well. And Luke Shaw is also our best crosser of the ball. So do you risk putting Malassia on? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you definitely have to have, and obviously right back is going to be Juan Bissaka. That should be, there should be no doubt about that. Um, let's see. Try that. Come on. Where is it? There we go. Jeez. And then obviously we have um, uh, Rafael Varane. Well, Rafael Varane will probably start. Um, I have a feeling he will. Um, so it is literally a question of do you play Varane and Lindelof and, or do you play Luke Shaw? And do you don't. Well, that's it. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, if I'm honest, because uh, you play Malassi and potentially he gets cooked as well. It's so difficult. It really is difficult. Um, personally, for me, I think that I think that you, I think you've got to trust Lindelof. Ah, do you? Nah, you know what? Go Luke Shaw. It's a risk still, but I would, I would still say go Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw is a left sided centre back. Has still been very good, um, and and he he just pocketed Harland and. Physically, he can go up against. And I also think as well that when he's there, because sometimes when Luke Shaw is left back, he's good going forward, of course, crossing, etc. And he has scored goals on the side. But sometimes, defensively, he can be a liability when he's done that sometimes. And I just think that, and you saw that to a certain extent against Liverpool when um, the fullbacks didn't track back. Him and I think Dallow it was. Um, so defensively, in this game, we need to be sharp. And I think this might be the best way. But again, I could be wrong. You could interchange them. So that means that Malassia who's going to have to have a game of his life, or had a decent game against City or Trafford, I think he steps into the left-back left back position. Now, midfield is obviously where it also gets interesting. Um, now that Anthony's out uh, and Martial's out, really, your front three is... I don't think you, could, I don't think you can start Ganacho in this. So, personally, I think what will probably happen um, is that it will be similar to what happened, I think, against City, where I think he'll play Fred... And Casemiro. Come on. Here we go. So I think Fred and Casemiro will start. I don't think, you know, McTominay's just come back. I, I don't think you can throw McTominay into this. Obviously, Van der Beek's not here. Sabitzer um, is injured, is not available. So really, it's it's a question of, are you going to play Fred, Casemiro and uh, Bruno or Fred, Casemiro and Eriksson or whatever? Now, with Anthony being out... Um, you know, you can potentially play Sancho on the right um, and Rash on the left, but then who plays up top? And does that mean that Ganacho plays on the left? I Ganacho for me is still not, I think, good enough to start. I think as an impact, yes, we need an impact from the bench in this game, uh, and that's got to be Ganacho, possibly Palestri as well. And you can't stop Palestri. So, personally, for me, I think that you have to play Fred Casemiro, and then you're going to play Ericsson in the camp. Um, that's what I think. Um, you know, could you play Ericsson off the left? Possibly, you know, but you can't. <coughs> Bruno has played on the right a lot of time this season. Um, and then I guess coming in. So I think for me, you know, on top of that, playing Bruno, um, at least Bruno being on the field, potentially have an extra midfielder so we could default back to a, you know, a four um a you know a free holding one one going forward for example and sometimes when we played this it's often um when bruno has been asked to come back and go deep it's allowed the likes of fred to go forward it's allowed ericsson to not necessarily because he doesn't have legs so it's it compensates for that so that's what i think 
That's what I think. I mean, let me know what you think, obviously, in the comments. But, you know, I don't know what other choice we have, to be honest. I think that Fernandez goes on the left here uh, when... Uh, man, come on. There we go, yeah. So I think he goes, Bruno goes on the right. Uh, then on the left, he plays Sancho, even though I would rather play Sancho off the right. Um, I don't know what choice we have. I mean, you know, the only thing I guess you could do is, you know, you it will be easy if we want to go to attack to say take Ericsson off and then bring Bruno in. And then when you want to bring on Ganacho, you can put, place Ganacho onto the right. Sorry, you can place Sancho onto the right, put Ganacho on the left and then keep Rashford up top, you know, or I'll send two. I don't know. Um, because we just don't have the striking options, really. We don't. And that's been the biggest problem. And for me, the worry about this team, obviously, Rashford is going to be up top, um, is that we're not going to be able to score goals. Um, City have tons of players in their team, Haaland, Bernardo, etc., that can score goals. Defensively, we might be okay, but I don't know where the goals are going to be going into this game. And I, I have a feeling that it'll be a lot of long ball, you know, the clearing, you know, trying to ball through to Rashford to get through. If Car Walker's playing, you know, if Car Walker's playing on this side, I don't know what San this this side is a worry because I don't know what Sancho's going to do against Car Walker, to be honest. I'll be honest. I don't know what he's going to do. Or any of our wingers against Walker. He's slow. Car Walker will pocket him. Malassia is quick, I guess, but still pocket him. So really, it's going to have to be on this side that we're going to have to get the joy. Can Wambasaka do deep to go forward? Like, our flanks are dead. Our flanks are incredibly dead. And really, I just think that cities, what they've been doing is they've been going out wide and using Erling Haaland and stretching and, and stretching us. That's going to be the advantage. So really, we're going to just have to defend to save our lives and try and through the ball, through ball to Rashford to get through and goal. Through the middle, basically. We have to play centrally because on the wings, I think I don't think we have a, sing, a, a chance in hell. We don't have a chance in hell. Um, it is what it is. Um, finally, score predictions. Um, as, I, as I do, obviously, this is a quick preview. We'll have a live reaction after then, which is a bit longer, but it is what it is. Um, what are my score predictions? I don't want to predict, <laughs> I don't want to predict a Manchester United um loss because I want the team to be courage going to this game, but this is going to be very, very difficult. It really, really is. You know, we're already weak because we don't have two of our attacking players. When you look at our bench. To come on, just Garnacho and Palestri, that's it. People need to be realistic. So if I'm honest, if I'm going to vote for United to win, it's going to be via penalties. You know, we somehow get it through to penalties, we defend really well, it's nil-nil or 1-1, one -one, and somehow United get a double of penalties. That's my prediction, because I just can't see how we win this in 90 minutes. But let me know what your thoughts are, guys. Anyway, guys, hopefully that's a good review. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to Red Devil Studio. Follow us on Twitter, you have to exit the notification button, face the news and more. Have a nice day, everyone. And cheers. Peace. Peace, peace, peace.